Games based on internet myths and stories have been an online mainstay for over a decade now. Tons of games based on creepypastas or other subsequent urban legends have come and gone over the years, with some even being big pillars of the horror game genre itself, some having such a diverse set of characteristics that they've been able to be translated several times by several completely separate devs in many different ways. For the longest time, I believe the pinnacle of this niche and the prime example of this topic was the SCP Foundation and its mythos. There's so many things that can be translated from that universe into playable form, and it's allowed several people to make games based around its lore and universe, which still frequently get made today. But, of course, new things always show up on the internet, and it wouldn't be long before another type of phenomenon would come to compete with the sheer amount of games made for a designated story. All's to say, Jesus Christ there are a lot of Backrooms games. The Backrooms, an internet story and concept I don't really think I need to give much of an explanation on. In the past year, the Backrooms has absolutely exploded though. Going from a relatively popular, but still kind of niche concept since its 2019 inception, to an absolute juggernaut of horror content, thanks to the Backrooms found footage series currently being made by Kane Pixels. The open-endedness of the Backrooms, along with it being a concept anyone is free to add to, has made it a very big point of contention for a ton of pieces of media, obviously writing being the main one, but also in videos as we just saw, and even getting big enough to get a full-on feature-length film being picked up for the concept. But I think there's no other piece of media that translates better for the backrooms than video games, and it makes complete sense too. Even taking away all the extra levels and interesting survival mechanics that could work in them, the original story itself is a play on video game mechanics such as note clipping, meaning the obvious piece of media to reflect this in would be video games. And because of this, there is a massive rabbit hole of backrooms games anywhere from itch.io to Roblox. Of course, course, with the concept being as flexible as it is, on top of it being an idea anyone can create and monetize off of, the quality of these experiences certainly varies to say the least. But I believe these games are nowhere more prevalent and diverse with what they offer than on Steam. At the time of writing this, if we're not counting VR-only titles, there are exactly 40 Backrooms games currently on Steam, all of them ranging from short tech demos to full-on immersive experiences with a good amount of content. Without daunting of a number that is, it makes me beg the question, is there any way to gauge how good every one of these games are? I mean, there's so many. I don't think anyone would want to put themselves through the torture of playing every single game on this list because they think it's funny. <laughs> Oh god, I have way too much free time on my hands. Yes, I am going to be ranking every single Backrooms game currently on Steam. Besides the VR-only titles, because I don't have a headset, so I better not see any comments about that. The Backrooms lend itself well to this concept, but on a basic level, it seems like it could get really stale really quick. That's why I am very curious to see how this turns out. Will there be games in there that sincerely surprise me and exceed my expectations? Or will every single one of these just be Yellow Room Simulator number 29? <laughs> Really, the only way to figure it out is to check all of them out. The ranking is going to work in a worst to best format, with the order of the games going from oldest to newest. Also, if I happen to miss a game on the list that I didn't include because it didn't show up in the tags, please go easy on me. Reviewing 40 games is not an easy task, and this is my first time doing something of this nature. So if a game didn't make it, please understand why. And this goes without stating, but my ranking is based on just my personal opinions while I had playing the game. So if you're a major major Backroom Warfare 2 fan and I potentially give that one a low ranking or something, don't take it too personally. But anyways, our journey starts all the way back to July 29th, 2019, with the game titled The Backrooms Game. The title certainly tells you what the game is, I'll give you that. But first, you there. This project took a ton of time to make, as you can tell by the length of this video, so I'd really appreciate if all of you could subscribe. I plan on doing bigger projects like this in the future, and it'd be nice if you could give them a bigger reach. All you gotta do is hit that little button. Alright? Cool. Let's get on with the video. One of the very few games on this list from the pre Kane Pixels era. This Backrooms game released all the way back in the summer of 2019, the same year that the original short story was posted to X. The Backrooms game is an alright first attempt at a playable Backrooms experience with the little information that we had at the time. You gotta keep in mind when this game was released, there were barely even three levels that were added to the mythos at this point. With most people just opting as the yellow rooms being the only thing in the Backrooms, that means no string demon 
demons, no hazmat suits, and especially no async. At least, not yet. The gameplay of this game is very simple, and you basically go through all of its content in less than 30 minutes. The goal of this game is to find an exit, which are dark and glitched walls that lead back to the outside, presumably at least. Every 30 seconds, you also need to press tab to check your watch to remember who you are. Throughout the game, you have the chance to encounter these black figures who when looked at for too long will result in a game over. When you find an exit portal, you have to do a quick mini game to calm yourself down, and once you enter, you win. This game obviously doesn't have too much going on, but it's a short and simple experience that serves as a very good mediator for things that will come in the future. My biggest criticism of this game was basically just the button bindings. Having the sprint button be shift and to open tab to check your watch every 30 seconds made me occasionally open Steam Overlay a couple of times, but that was about it. I can honestly appreciate this game a ton for being so connected to the old backrooms concepts that you don't really see evaluated on much anymore since the Kane Pixels canon practically has become everyone's default continuity. The stuff about remembering who you are and keeping track of time are very old concepts introduced outside of the original X post, but still pieces of lore that were added very early on into the backrooms existence. Overall, a very short and sweet game which serves the purpose of a median for what we will talk about next. Speaking of which... Just three days after the release of the first Backrooms game we talked about, another dev put out their own Backrooms game, and... Dear God. I was hesitant to even cover this game because it barely has any Backrooms imagery in it at all. All that is similar is that there's rooms labeled by levels. That's it. Level 1 is this weird looking white walled wooden floor area with a bunch of doors that lead to completely empty rooms. All the windows are completely broken too, with you being able to see right through the windows to all the broken geometry outside. Oh yeah, there's also this devil guy that follows you around as you go on I guess. Level 2 throws you into this weird sci-fi spaceship looking area, which you have to walk through briefly to enter this industrial area. Choosing the right path at this intersection area brings you up to a hole that says when you drop down to it, it brings you to level 3. Does it? Nope. It just brings you back down to level 2. Oh yeah, did I also mention that this game has a grating soundtrack that plays throughout the entire game? It lasts no longer than 15 seconds, but it never turns off. You have to listen to it for your entire runtime of this game, and it gets so goddamn grating. But anyways, if you were to choose the left intersection, nothing much changes, but you can try to jump out of this area with failed geometry, and I ended up breaking the game by supposedly getting all the way to the final level, with the devil guy from earlier now being huge and telling us to go to sleep. When we enter the bed, we're given this great ending screen, and it's said that we got the bad ending, but like hell I'm going to do any of that again. Not only is this game so much worse than the first, not only in presentation, but in and also controls and optimization, but this one also costs a whole doubloon on Steam, meaning it's not only worse, but you also have to pay for it. I don't think I need to explain further why this game is terrible. It was obviously made by people who have no understanding of the concept of the backrooms, and just wanted to make something to steal unsuspecting people's money. Easily way worse than the backrooms game, and will probably remain at the bottom of our list for a good while. Next. <laughs> Well, that was fast. This is the last game on our list that is prior to the Kane Pixels floodgates being opened. Every game after this, you're going to see at least one idea borrowed from him in most of the future games. Will Enter the Backrooms end this era off of a bang? The Steam page advertises that it's been in development for over two years, so I'm certainly excited to see what's up with it. And with this game having a $10 entry, I'm praying I get my money's worth. And honestly, I don't think I did at all. I'm sorry, I can see the effort that was put into this project, I really can, but I just can't get behind saying that it's enjoyable. Enter the Backrooms has some of the most levels out of any Backrooms game we're going to play on this entire list, but it doesn't really mean much of anything because almost all of the levels are exactly the same, just some with higher entity counts and some gimmicks that can be seen as a little different from past levels, but not enough to actually mean anything interesting. The game has around 40 levels to its name, with me only experiencing a few of them. Thankfully though, this game has a level 
level selector where I can choose all of the levels in order, but I still opted to just explore a few of them because most of them can usually be boiled down to the exact same thing with just a minor texture change. I understand that having a unique looking setting with random generation can be hard, but half, if not all of these levels are just practically clones of level zero with no variety. Even levels like eight and 11 will have you outside in a neighborhood or in a big city, but you don't really feel like where you are is any different from where you were because the core gameplay doesn't change at all in between the levels. The gameplay just consists of finding some notes and a very limited selection of items on the ground. And while you do that, you look for the exit of the level. Sometimes you can encounter a small variety of enemies that will all practically boil down to being the same thing, so it gets really repetitive really fast. I think it would have been easier to digest if it moved at a faster pace, but exit doors are incredibly rare, and you could stay in just one level from anywhere up to an hour after spawning in. I think a good backrooms game definitely needs to find a good balance between being drawn out enough to feel trapped, but not drawn out enough to bore you to death. That's why a backrooms game going forward shouldn't be depending on the quantity of the levels, but rather how each different level plays, and how interacting with the environment affects it all. All in all, Enter the Backrooms has a whole lot of nothing, unfortunately. I even enjoyed its visual style a good amount too. The early 3D environments could mesh really well with the setting if there was just more going on. But as it stands, I wholeheartedly cannot recommend this game for its $10 entry fee. I'm gonna put this one below the Backrooms game, but above the Backrooms. It's just mid, unfortunately. Moving on. This one, like the previous, has so much potential, but it doesn't really utilize it. Which makes sense because one of the things the devs state in this game is that it was made in Unity in six days. The Abyss Has Walls is a very short and sweet demo of a game. Starting you off in a parody of an old Windows desktop, you're given a variety of videos you can view of somebody exploring the backrooms. Although all of these videos seem to be different at first, the only difference between them seems to be just the amplification of this game's gimmick. We'll get to that in a second though. The goal of this game is to just simply find an exit within level zero. But while you're exploring, you'll find an abundance of expo markers just lying on the ground that you can use to mark where you've been. I think the overabundance of the markers is a little goofy, but the concept itself is actually really creative when combined with the real-time physics. Speaking of real-time physics though, while you search for an exit in this place, the ground slowly starts to crumble around you and you risk falling into the void. This title was a lie. All in all, it's fairly functional and serves its purpose pretty well. You can beat the game in a very, very short amount of time. But I found it to- Oh my god, man. But I found it to be fairly replayable. Although the fact that this is a price game can definitely be considered a setback for some people, I certainly believe that this game may be worth as much as a cheap TF2 cosmetic. Overall, it could have certainly been worse. This one is gonna go at the top of the list for now. It certainly was the most satisfying so far. Is it gonna keep that title for a while? Probably not, hopefully, but we'll just have to see as we go to our next installment. This one was interesting to say the least. The Backroom Survival is the first game on our list that had multiplayer compatibility, and it went as well as you'd imagine. The game has an incredibly archaic proximity chat system in that it is awful to use. Oh wait, oh, I, okay, found, okay, I found, I found, I found, like I found a big key. Oh, a big key. Let me probably open up like the super door. <laughs> the super door to the super rooms. But because of that, it was really funny. So I got a buddy and we muted our mics and used this instead while we played. <gasps> no, Camden! The gargoyle! This game is incredibly rough around the edges, but I'd honestly would be lying if I didn't say I at least had a little fun with it. You could choose a class at the beginning of the game, which gives you a certain ability to help you survive in the back rooms. It can be anything from having a chance to find better loot drops to doing more damage on some of the entities inside of the back rooms. Speaking of which, the entities in this game are really funny, though they don't seem to be connected to the actual back rooms mythos at all. Like for example, we have gargoyles in level zero for some reason, and they function like weeping angels too. All around, it's a pretty odd choice. That's not to say everything is 100% inaccurate though. We still got death moths and party goers and stuff, but all around, some of the entity choices are definitely just odd and don't really mesh all that well. I really like the idea of a backroom survival game though. One where you have free reign over all the resources and management of whatever you can find in the walls that you have no clipped inside. It's honestly my ideal premise for a backrooms game. And with different levels being something you can travel to and 
understand from pretty quickly, the gameplay keeps you engaged enough with what's going on to stay somewhat fresh. That being said though, some of the level choices are incredibly strange, like what even is this, where are we? This game feels more like just a bunch of random assets being thrown at the wall, with clashing game mechanics most of the time rather than a true, faithful interpretation of the backrooms as a concept. But I do believe a game like this that is a little bit more refined and faithful would be absolutely incredible. But the backroom survival misses the mark by just that much. And with the $6 price tag, I'd only recommend it if you get another buddy with you, deafen in your VC you have going on with them, and rely on this game's god-awful voice chat to carry you through. I think this Steam review of the game sums it up pretty well. A phenomenally low-quality game. I'm putting this one under the abyss as walls, but above the backrooms game. Just a fun, silly little romp you can get out of your friends for about an hour. Moving on. Christ, talk about a snooze fest. The Backroom Project doesn't really do much of anything interesting, taking a lot of inspiration from the Kane Pixel series as well as the wiki. This is obviously completely okay, as basically every game to come after this will do the exact same. What I have a problem with is the execution of those ideas. The Backroom Project starts you off in a pretty nice looking facility environment. I don't know if this was ripped from somewhere else, but it serves its purpose. We then get this expedition dump with text that you can barely even process as you look around, and some of the most awful sound design out of any of these games we've played so far. But actually getting into the backrooms is a completely different mess. The environment itself is okay, nothing to write home about, but there have certainly been worse interpretations of level 0 before this. The thing that is boring about level 0 in this game is that the map is so small and predictable that you will loop around it several times before you will find an actual exit door. This game also does this incredibly annoying thing where the film grain filter is cranked all the way up to the frickin' max the entire time, making it so that when you walk around it looks like you lost your glasses. There's two entities in this level that I know of. These pink guys who, when you walk up to them, give you one of the best jump scares I have ever seen in a horror game. And accompanying him is the Kane Pixel String Demon, who also has a really funny scream. Also, another thing we can talk about is how awful the audio balancing is in this game. It was really prevalent in the starting area, but it becomes even more so in the actual level. The thing that chases you has no dynamic audio in the slightest, meaning that you can be in the same room as it, but if you're too far away enough, you won't hear it make any sound at all until it gets just close enough to fade in. It's incredibly disorienting, as this effect is so hard to hear if you're not literally 8 feet in front of it. Eventually though, you'll find a door and no clip into level 1. This area is literally 2 floors long from my experience. It's incredibly linear and short, with each level looking like the exact same copy and pasted down areas several times. Entering the next door takes you to level run, which to my knowledge is also the first interpretation of this level in a video game so far. And honestly, this one is the most creative out of the 4 levels included in this game. It's also really short, but having a little running sequence where you need to run away from a bunch of entities chasing you down is pretty cool. And the last level is level 2, and this is where the game completely fell apart. The entire strategy of this level is to just hold down shift and W until you find the door at the end. Occasionally this guy will just spawn and despawn next to you, but he doesn't serve as a challenge at all if you're just continuing the sprint. Once you get out, it shows you the same lab from the start all dilapidated and stuff. In conclusion, this would have been fine if it was free, but this game was another whole $10, and I beat it twice in the span of one hour. Don't buy this, there's nothing special to this game, and it was so obviously hastily put together. This one is going below Enter the Backrooms, but above the Backrooms. Next. It's crazy that we're getting to a point where several of these games are releasing in the same month as each other. Goes to show you how massive of a phenomenon the backrooms have become at this point. And this game? Well, it certainly contributes, I guess. Actually, I quite enjoyed this one. The Backrooms 1998 found footage backroom survival horror game, Jesus Christ, that is one mouthful of a title. I'll just be calling this one 1998 for now on. And this game could basically have the backrooms removed from the title because it doesn't really have anything to do with it. 1998 is 
is one of the games on this list that borrows fewer elements from Kane Pixels. The only thing being a parallel from it is obviously the VHS aesthetic of the game. In this instance, the backroom serves more as just a backdrop rather than something actually important to the presentation of the game. It starts with footage of these teenagers filming themselves skating around a skate park until suddenly our cameraman slips and no clips into the backrooms. This game is a stealth survival horror where you're meant to escape this raincoat wearing monster and collect various items around the map to escape. <laughs> but by god is this game tryhard, and I think I know why. One of the more unique mechanics about 1998 is the use of your microphone while playing. If it gets too loud, the monster chasing you will have an easier time detecting you. How do they get you to try and use your microphone? By spamming jump scare after jump scare at you with no reason whatsoever. On the off chance that they might get a little ah out of you to have your presence be detected. To the point where after a while, it stops becoming scary and just predictable. When I walk into a room, I just expect there to be something to pop out in front of my face and go boo at me. Funnily enough, the only time I was audibly scared was at an incredibly subtle jump scare where you could briefly see the shadow of the mannequin move behind you while walking away. This works because when things are thrown in your face, they inherently just become less scary because you expect it. I don't want to come off as some horror snob who can only enjoy bone-chilling, spine-tingling, atmospheric horror with no jump scares. I'd be kind of a hypocrite if I claim to be. But having constant, unrelated jump scares thrown in your face every damn second isn't an effective use of them, and just annoyed me way before they scared me. I mentioned earlier that 1998 barely has anything to do with the backroom's concept, and that remains true even in the game's environment. 1998 throws out all of the liminal horror of the backrooms in exchange for excessive gore and spooky imagery. This is a problem I also have with the last backrooms game we covered, and it's just because I think it's super out of place for the setting. An occasional dead body of a wanderer, even a mangled one, could make sense in the back rooms, but an excessive amount of blood everywhere on top of mutilated bodies as far as the eye can see is just not what I believe this concept should be built on. But if I were to be real for a second, you can kinda argue that the fact that a take like this on the back rooms even being possible is the charm of it. But at that point, why even make a backrooms game at all? Swap out the back rooms for any other setting for this game and you basically got the same thing. It feels more like the dev decided to make this game base around the back rooms last minute as a way to get more eyes on the game. The entire the entire thing also just plays relatively slow. Think the House Beneviento section from Resident Evil Village, but drawn out to the length of a full game. You constantly need to avoid this raincoat monster, and if it spots you, you need to hide. I didn't die once while playing this game, but it does offer you two safe spots that I know of. So if you do plan on playing it, make sure you choose them wisely if you're having troubles. After finding all the items, the story of this game is then revealed to you. And if you thought the jump scares were tryhard, get a load of this. The story of this game is that we didn't actually know Clip, but we broke our neck and were sent to purgatory for killing a child and filming it. Now this is pretty obvious while playing the game, and I could tell that this was going to be a twist from a mile away, with there being sentences like, do you remember now, written on the walls and stuff. But I was still shocked at how poorly presented it all was. The reason why the group of teens did such a heinous act was just because they could. The news report they read off at the end of this game too is also incredibly goofy. Like it keeps bringing up fried chicken for some reason, it's just weird. Apparently it's loosely based on real events that happened, but I don't really want to verify if that's true or not. Given how serious of a subject matter that is for a video about walking around yellow rooms. And the message at the end being the scariest monster is truly other humans was also incredibly forced and tasteless. But hey, at least that drawing on the walls mechanic from the Abyss has halls returns here, so that's a plus. Overall, 1998 was an alright survival horror experience but not a great Backrooms game. Despite that though, with my overall enjoyment, I'd still put this one at the top of the list for now. There is clear effort put in here, and I can acknowledge that. Do I think it's worth its $10 price tag? That's really up for you to decide. I think it certainly should be cheaper, but we've had way worse games on this list so far for even more money than that. Moving on. This right here, ladies, gentlemen, anything in between, this right here is the pinnacle of gaming. 
Secret Backrooms would be the worst game on this list if it weren't for the second game we already reviewed. This one is so obscure that I wasn't even able to find gameplay of it. This game just consists of running around the most predictable maze of all time, and this little fellow will chase you occasionally. There's a difficulty slider before you enter, but I don't think it does anything. There's also a second game mode in this game called Survival Mode that turns the walls white for some reason, and that's really about it. You also control like a truck in this game, and it's awful. You slip around so much while you're running, and it's incredibly disorienting. After finding some doors, I eventually got to this forest area that has a whole bunch of world borders around it before being jump scared by the shadow guy again, and then I gave up. Second bottom on the list so far, only better than the back rooms. Let's move on while we can. I have very mixed feelings on this one. Inside the Backrooms is one of the more promising games to be played on this list so far, but it is so boring if you aren't playing with a group of friends. This game has a proximity chat system just like the last game we played, but unlike that one, this one is actually usable. You're also given a radio very early on in the game too, and being split up from your team and hearing one of them scream on the radio while being chased is really funny. The biggest problem I have with this game is that there's just simply not much variety. It features four linear levels with various puzzles you need to do to get to the end of it. I personally enjoyed this when you're not doing it alone, but some of the people I was playing with didn't really reciprocate the same feelings. Your objective changes depending on which puzzle you're doing, and the further you get, the closer you are to progressing to the next level, with each level presumably getting more difficult as you progress. Level 0 was a blast for me because I got the opportunity to play it with a full party, but I had to play the rest of the game by myself, and it was awful. For the sake of this video, I played the game on easy mode, which gives you unlimited revives. But even with that crutch, this game got so boring and overdrawn to the point where I didn't even bother finishing it. It's obvious that this game had multiplayer in mind before single player, because the puzzles in single player take so long to solve. Specifically, this monitor puzzle in level 1, which took me more than an hour to do. Not because it was necessarily difficult, but because it was just so inconvenient to solve. I will give this game credit for one thing, though, and that this is the most lore-friendly Backrooms game on this list so far if you account for the wiki concepts and the Kane Pixels mythos. We got a lot of entities ripped straight from that series as well as the wiki, and it's something I enjoyed seeing faithfully adapted. I do have a ton of other miscellaneous gripes with this game, such as the walk speed which moves at a genuine snail's pace, but it doesn't really affect much of anything if you're playing with a large group, which I would highly recommend doing. It basically functions the same as an escape room, but Backrooms themed, and the cooperation you have to partake in to solve the puzzles to move forward, I found to be quite enjoyable. But with all of that being said, avoid this game like the plague if you don't have anyone to play it with. Still, I would easily put this at the top of the list so far despite my issues with it. Can you argue that says more about the quality of this genre so far than anything else? Maybe, but for $6, I think this one was alright. Okay, what's next? Lazy. That's all I really need to say. The Backrooms Mass Extinction was actually one of the games on this list I was really excited to play at first, seeming to have really high quality and big looking levels on top of dynamic survival mechanics. Instead, it is about the most bare bones a concept like that can get. First off, let's talk about the optimization. This game runs terribly. The game would just randomly load and unload at points and would leave me with major lighting bugs to be caught in for seconds at a time, alongside major frame dips and even randomly crashing. Oh yeah, this game is also like 30 gigabytes. It's an incredibly empty and soulless experience with no variety at all. I encountered no entities while playing, despite the game saying that there are apparently entities in there. But if it functioned like anything else I've seen in this game so far, it might be a good thing I skipped out on viewing them. There's just a lot of half-baked and not well-executed ideas here that I could not warrant it being worth the $13 asking price. Putting this one above the backroom project, but below enter the backrooms. Alright, what's next? Generic and boring. This Backrooms game, taking its name directly from the Kane Pixel series, does not deliver any worthwhile content compared to the other games we played. You get three levels, zero to two, some survival mechanics, and a few entities. And it's just not enjoyable. I'll be real with you, this whole liminal horror thing is starting to feel a bit old. We have yet to really play many games that have broken the norm of just exploring one to three levels with shallow chasing enemies following you around and maybe the occasional puzzle. These games keep following 
following the same formula to varying degrees for the entire time we've been delving into these games, and it's just getting really stale. This one doesn't feel fun to play, the resources they expect you to manage go down way too quickly, and they become borderline impossible to find in later levels. The entities aren't interesting either, and are just the three same enemy types we have seen up until this point. This game also has some sort of leveling system, I guess, but you wouldn't catch me dead unironically trying to grind out the backrooms found footage. Overall, pretty inoffensive for the most part, but not fun. I don't know, put this one under Enter the Backrooms but above Mass Extinction. Let's just hope something more creative comes up soon, because these games are starting to feel like they're bleeding into each other. Moving on. <laughs> Fellas, I have great news. After 12 games, we finally got the first free one on this list since the very first game we have played. And it is also somehow unequivocally the best game we have played on this entire list so far. The Backroom Lost and Found throws out a lot of what you may be familiar with for the Backrooms up until this point, while also staying true enough to the source material to feel like a genuine interpretation of the Backrooms as a concept. Rather than just being used as a set piece that could be swapped out with literally anything else. Else. It advertises itself as a horror light experience, which I think is an apt description of what this game feels like. It doesn't really try to be scary in the sense that there's a lot of jump scares or terrifying set pieces. It more just tries to build a genuinely unique atmosphere with how its gimmicks work. This Backrooms game doesn't have you exploring multiple levels, but rather has you hopping through two variations of level zero, the positive side and the negative side. This is also surprisingly the first Backrooms game to sincerely feature no clipping as a mechanic so far, which is something super surprising to me. But I think it's a very welcome decision on the dev's end. The main goal of this game is to reunite this toy giraffe family in this little room that you control in the center of the facility. Your main threats in this game are these little mannequin dudes, who don't seem to do much on the positive side until later, but on the negative side, they manifest into pure bad energy, slowly making their way towards you, damaging you if too close to their vicinity. I don't know if you can die in this game since I didn't once while playing, but the game does offer you very generous save areas, so even if you do, I don't think you'll be that much of a problem. The negative side does have a pretty well-executed underlying feeling of urgency, which makes you feel like you shouldn't be there any longer than you are, making the times you do actually need to go in there feel fairly stressful from what this game seems to be going for. As you run around these two planes, you eventually unite the small giraffe family all back together, and you could start making your way towards the exit, but the fireplace in the middle burns out, leaving you without fuel. Meaning Meaning you are left with only one other option. You burn the giraffe family, along with other miscellaneous items in the room, implying in another ending, you could have got across with different items you found while exploring the facility. I, for one, did not have those items the first time playing, and I just did what I had to do to beat the game. One way or another, you do eventually get across to the exit door, though. Say, it'd be really weird if this game was connected to the SCP Foundation all of a sudden. No, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, apparently this game is a crossover game of the Backrooms concept and the SCP mythos. I can see how a lot of Backrooms purists would see this as an absolute sin, but I personally don't mind it that much. It makes a lot of sense that people would want to combine these two concepts, as they are so similar to each other on a magnitude of levels, and although it's personally not my favorite thing to do, I can certainly excuse and look past it. But that is only one side of the story. There's a second chapter to be done, which is less of a second chapter and more of a hard mode for chapter one, with some additional content. Your objectives this time around are much more sinister looking than the first, with an intercom occasionally going off updating the facility on the progress that you're making. Supposedly playing as a D-class now with the added context we are given. A new enemy type is introduced this time around too, as well as a new no-clipping mechanic where some of the walls will fold in on themselves, allowing you to walk to the other side. As you collect the giraffe family once more, it implies that you cannot wait to burn them. As for all of the games so far, you only refer to the toys as fuel, rather than their actual names like the the first go around. But in a strange turn of events, the game asks you to throw yourself in the fire instead. Choosing to throw yourself into the fire reverts the experience to an old MS-DOS choose your own adventure game, where you can choose certain options to get a different ending. From where I was, I was actually able to get across the gap without sacrificing any of the giraffe toys and burning other objects in the room. When I got to the other side, I ended up getting a certificate once I got out. Getting what I can only assume is the good ending? I don't know, but whatever happened, 
I am satisfied with the result. This is without a doubt the best Backrooms game by far, and might even remain at the top of the list for the rest of this video. If there is any game you should play on here, it's this one. It's free too, so if you do have the ability, go check this one out and support the dev if you can. Top of the list so far, let's see if we can keep that momentum going with the future games. Oh, look what it is. I'll be completely honest, this game right here is a big reason as to why I wanted to make this list in the first place. Escape the Backrooms is the most popular Backrooms game currently out by a large margin. I constantly see people talking about this one, with videos on this game getting thousands of millions of views, and the developers' YouTube devlogs going absolutely viral every single time one is put out. This one is acclaimed for being the best Backrooms game currently around as well, with a pretty good user review score score on Steam to bat. So, does this game live up to the hype? Eh. This is another case of a game that is most certainly meant to be played with friends first before being played in single player. But since I'm just a little dude locked away, isolated from any outside force, I didn't really have anyone to play this one with, unfortunately. I got two people with me to do level 0 and a little bit of level 1, but the rest of the time, I was on my own. I feel like the experiences between playing alone and playing with friends are very different, as I just generally did not enjoy a lot of the levels I got to play while I did. Specifically, level 4, level fun, and level end. All of these levels have incredibly hard to avoid AI with very poorly explained mechanics thrown at you, and it's left me stuck in certain areas for much more time than I like to admit. Level fun and level end in particular were major levels of jank. The poor AI made some parts of this game an absolute nightmare to traverse, which is very unfortunate honestly because this is by far the absolute best looking backrooms game on this entire list. Every level is structured very, very linearly, but I honestly really enjoyed this approach. I much prefer having to solve puzzles in certain levels to get to others instead of just mindlessly meandering around and hoping to stumble upon an exit. You can argue that this approach isn't as faithful to the actual concept of the backrooms, but at this point I don't really care anymore. If the game is fun to play, then I'll enjoy it. As I briefly mentioned previously, the levels are absolutely stunning as well. You can tell that that Fancy, the dev of this game, has a strong suit in environmental art above everything else, and I personally believe that to be one of the biggest strengths to have while making a game like this. The levels by themselves take itself pretty seriously in their presentation, but it's really everything else that is sort of lacking. First, let's talk about the character model that you play as. A part of me is actually kind of glad I got to play this alone because my god, having to look at this guy bend his back into a 90 degree angle while I'm being chased by entities sounds horrifying. A lot of the Models and animations in this game are incredibly wonky looking and stick out like a sore thumb when paired with the incredibly polished and highly detailed environments. I personally think the worst offenders of this are the player model as I previously mentioned, but also this little goober that roams the end level who I decided to name Dennis. It seems Fancy as of right now is more concerned with adding more levels to the game than improving on old ones, but I personally believe that an animation and model overhaul update would serve as a very needed and appreciated update before or anything else. Out of all the games on this list so far, I believe this one to have the most future potential. And if you're watching this fancy, I hope you continue to improve your game as you go along. You got something good here, and I'm really excited to see what you'll be doing with it next. Just maybe please consider reworking this boss fight, I am begging you. Putting this one at the top of the list, just under Lost and Found. Has the quality of the games now peaked? We'll just have to see as we continue going down. Moving on. Man, we're on a roll lately, aren't we? The streak of pretty good games continues with this one. The complex, found footage is an incredibly pretty Backrooms game. Capturing the VHS looks perfectly on top of its stunning environments. This game doesn't have much gameplay to it, and I beat it in less than 30 minutes. But despite that, I was really satisfied with what I was delivered. It's basically all the best areas from the early Kane Pixels tapes all condensed into one playable area. Despite that though, the whole progression and tension feels very real with this one despite not having a single threat or even a jump scare. Though, the complex was still able to deliver this feeling of dread that comes with the abstractness of liminal horror. A sound you can't directly make out in the distance, your elevator briefly stopping in a dark room, red lights showing up in the night sky. All of these things, although not serving a direct harm to you in the experience, still manage to put you on the edge of your seat waiting for something to happen, with those things never coming. With this game being free, I don't want to give too much away honestly. It's a very short 
experience that you can get through in a very timely manner. If you have a half hour and a gigabyte to spare, check this one out. This game was made by someone who has a very clear understanding on how the backrooms and liminal horror as a whole are supposed to be done. This one is going right in between Escape the Backrooms and Lost and Found. Will this winning streak continue? I hope so. These games are starting to pull me back in. Let's see what's next. Never mind, that was fast. Another case of these games just blending into one another. You traverse the same four incredibly linear levels that you've grown used to and get chased while doing so. Though, if there is one thing I can somewhat give this game, it's that it has really nice camera animation. Especially with how elegantly the transition between the falling animation to the gameplay was in the beginning. Everything else felt incredibly rushed though. Such as this keypad not being something you can formally exit out of, and the AI being incredibly easy to cheat. This serves as a fine enough demo someone probably made to test out game development, but it's certainly not something I can recommend for $7 on Steam. I'll put this one above the Backrooms found footage, but below Enter the Backrooms. About as forgettable as found footage, but not as overly offensive with how poorly it plays. This game also has what is basically $7 DLC just to play multiplayer in it. I don't know, but I'm not shilling the extra money just to play this one with another person. Let's move on. Wow. I honestly don't even really know where to start with this one. Dream Logic is a very linear and short experience, but still offers some of the most variety out of any of these liminal games we have played up until this point. You don't even start in level zero in this one, it throws you straight into the pool rooms, and you don't even get to the yellow rooms until you've practically finished the game. I believe this is because the type of narrative this game is trying to set up, with you playing as a detective, researching cold cases of very mysterious disappearances. All of these levels in some way reflect where the victims were when they disappeared. The puzzles in this game are pretty straightforward, but I found they were fun to solve. In some of the environments, such as this beautiful sky you float around for a while, or this synthwave car chase that you partake in, really set the game aside from being just another Backrooms game. This game legitimately feels like it lives up to the title of Dream Logic. This game plays as if you are in a dream, and by the end, it slowly warps into a nightmare, with the game even ending with you being buried alive, the dirt slowly sinking into your casket with you. This was a super enjoyable experience, but I still have to recommend it with a caution, as you still need to shill out six bucks to this game, and it can be beat in less than an hour. But if you're a fan of liminal spaces, and you just want another short game where you can explore a few, then by all means go for this one. I'm putting this one under 1998, but above the abyss has walls. The quality of these games feel like it's really starting to step up, and I'm honestly here for it. Let's keep going. This one is strange. No clip feels like there's a good amount of effort put in here, but I still don't think I can say that it's all that fun. It starts with this really funny cutscene explaining the backrooms as the concept is in real life, then it just throws you into level zero. You can find different exit gates as you explore around, and there's a fairly bare bones crafting system thrown in there too. This one is also incredibly long and drawn out with its progression, but I didn't find it to be too unbearable. Things go fast enough sometimes, but other times it feels like an absolute slog to play. I'd only recommend this one if you have a few hours to kill in a decent attention span. For $3, we've had way worse games before this. Putting this one above the Backrooms game, but below the Backrooms survival. Uh, another boring and infinitely generating Backrooms game. I spent like an hour running around this procedurally generated level zero finding nothing but chairs and some rope. I was able to make an axe, but I didn't find a single thing to use it on. This game is way too slow burn to me, and it's hard for me to even believe there's more to this game. After running around for a while, I eventually fell off the map and I just called it quits there. Am I unfairly judging this one? Maybe. But I racked up more than an hour in this game, and I practiced practically did nothing. This one is also one of the most pricey ones on the list too, so unless there's major balancing changes in the future, I cannot recommend this one for the price. I'm putting this one above the Backrooms Mass Extinction, but below the Backrooms found footage. Let's hope that we can get back to that streak that we were on earlier. You know, this one feels very similar. Wait. No way. This is the same game as before! This game, once again, literally just titled The Backrooms, seems to just take the same assets from the Backrooms footage, down to the way the camera moves and everything. Which honestly makes me take back what I said about the camera transitions from earlier because it just seems to be a pre-made asset, along with this level zero featured in both games. Okay, it isn't a complete one-to-one -one copy of the Backrooms footage, but I honestly don't know if that's a bad thing or not. You're given like four unique environments in this game with little to nothing to 
do in them. They look kind of visually impressive, especially this hospital environment, but I don't want to compliment it too much because I don't know if they're just stock assets anymore. I broke the game a whole three times in the hospital level, so I just called it quits there. Another lazy attempt at making one of these games, putting it under Welcome to the Backrooms. Well, would you look at that? We're almost halfway through the list. Yay. I don't know what you do in this one, honestly. I just ran around the same repetitive level zero environment for like an hour, and every time I thought it was progressing, I just kept getting stuck and circling around the same area over and over. I may be judging this one unfairly too, but I'm sorry. This one was just unbearable to play, and I cannot bring myself to try and progress past the hour I already tried to put in to navigate this hell. Putting this one below, welcome to the back rooms as well. Really hoping this streak is just a fluke and we could get on track soon. I honestly can't tell if I love or hate this one. Reality Noclip is one of the more unique looking games on this list, with the environments resembling an earlier 3D look than even Enter the Backrooms. All of the items are just these clip art PNGs too, and although it has sort of a charm to it, the game itself is just alright. It's about what you'd expect at this point, walking around a couple of levels with some monster chasing you occasionally, and finding a limited selection of items as you go along. All of the monsters in this game are also just PNGs too, and they slide at you like they're Gmod PNG chaser next bots, which is pretty funny. Though I think I broke the game at around this point because I died in level fun and once I did, it wouldn't let me go back in, even after restarting the game. From what I did get to play though, for 99 cents, I don't think it was the worst thing in the world. Generally a pretty inoffensive backrooms project with more unique visuals to what we have come accustomed to at this point. I think I'll put it above the backrooms game, but below no clipped. Another Unity asset flip walking simulator where you don't do anything. Survival in the Backrooms has an inventory system and even weapons with killable enemies, but it lacks any sort of meaningful gameplay at all. The two levels I could play, especially the pool rooms, were such a slog to get through and I was not having fun doing so. From what I saw, there was two enemy types in this game, this TV head guy in level 0, and these flesh dudes that you can shoot in the pool rooms. The pool rooms is an incredibly broken area that moves so slow due to to your inability to sprint in water, and having to go through large pits of it as well as sinking to the bottom of every pool you enter like you're an anchor while trying to cross does not help when trying to move efficiently. The objective for the pool rooms is not clear at all, and I was running around here for such a long amount of time doing absolutely nothing. I ended up breaking the game and getting out of bounds before I even found an exit to this level, and that's when I knew I had to call it quits. Just incredibly poorly structured and nothing special enough to warrant your purchase. I'm gonna put this one below low levels of the backrooms, but above the second self-titled backrooms game on this list. It has potential to be fairly okay if the progression was a little better. This game is actually broken. I tried to play it with a few friends, and they literally could not progress with me. I don't think I was missing out on this one, though. Just another level zero walking simulator with a bare-bones inventory system. Putting this one all the way down to under the backroom project. It is literally unplayable in the way it's intended to be. Do not give this one your $5. Next. <laughs> Okay, we're kinda coming back. Transliminal has a lot of setup for a really solid Backrooms game, but it's clearly unfinished. This game does a lot of really cool stuff, such as setting up a genuine narrative for you to uncover as you explore the interior walls of this complex. While your protagonist gives real-time and dynamic narration on your current situation, the game starts with you recording yourself skydiving, with your instructor apparently being Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, the dialogue implies that you're doing this as some sort of therapy exercise, and you start to feel uneasy about going through with it. But, you do decide to jump, and when you do, your parachute and safety parachute both malfunction, leaving you without any way to stop from falling straight to the earth. I guess old habits die hard. Waking up, you find yourself isolated within the familiar yellow rooms. This game can be boiled down to just another walking simulator, and to be fair, it certainly is, but I believe the thing that sets this one apart from a lot of other games like this we have played is just how dynamic everything feels. You can find cassettes around the map that are either telling you the backstory on how this iteration of the backrooms came to be, or some incredible 
incredibly good background tracks that I can only assume are made for this game. My biggest problem with this one just comes down to there not seeming to be an ending of any sort. It's four environments the game also gives you do start to get a little tiring after a while as well, and there's no dedicated save feature to this game, meaning every run you do, you need to start over entirely from scratch. And with this one also being a $15 venture, I definitely wait until this game gets finished to buy it. Unlike most games on this list, I can tell you that there is a soul behind this one, and that deserves a lot more attention than it's currently getting though. I just believe that the dev might want to do a permanent price cut just to make this one more accessible for what it is to potential players. Putting this one above the backroom survival, but below the abyss has walls. Are we starting to get back on track, or are the good games going to continue being very few and far between? Guess venturing deeper will be the only way to find out. No! We're not doing this again. It is literally the same game for a third time. I'm sorry, I cannot do this anymore. This game is going in second to last. I am not reviewing the same goddamn thing for the third time. Next. Just another broken survival backrooms game where you don't do anything but run away from the bacteria creature. These are by far the worst types of games on this list, to the point where if I see a pre-made hazmat suit model, I just assumed I am not in for a good time. The only items you can find are stuff that takes your sanity down, and these vases that don't seem to do anything. I broke the game a couple of times, and I just decided to call it quits. Very forgettable, very boring, putting it below mass extinction. <laughs> Oh my god, finally a good game. The last few Unity and Unreal asset swaps have been really getting to me. You know, it's very interesting that going into this, I said that I think a Backrooms game with survival mechanics would be the ideal way to craft a game based around this concept. But all of my favorite games so far have only been the walking simulator ones with light puzzles. The Backrooms Lost Tape is just a tier lower than the complex and visual fidelity, but makes up for it in slightly more interactivity. Level 0 in this game actually feels like it has stuff in it, and going around looking for notes, trying to solve this password puzzle for the computer wasn't that bad of a challenge. Say, it'd be real funny if this game was also linked back to SCP lore too. oh god damn it. Yeah, just like Lost and Found, this one links the Backrooms mythos back to SCP lore, which I've already given my opinion on, so there's no need to repeat it again. Speaking of Lost and Found though, look who it is! Anyways, you get to this environment after putting the password into the computer and opening a door that leads to this cramped elevator. This environment, then leads to the pool rooms, and this has to be my favorite rendition of this space in a 3D environment so far. Being able to see the bright blue sky was a super nice touch to this environment, alongside not being able to see the ground. It really feels like a dreamlike environment, and there were even a few moments where the visuals looked as good as Backrooms found footage videos. This one has some of the most varied environments out of any of these games we've played as well, with all of the levels looking just as stunning as the last. My only criticism I have about the levels past Zero is that it just boils down to walking and nothing else after. Level Zero is the only one with an actual puzzle attached to it, and I think there being a puzzle for every level would have been a better call. But regardless, I was still entertained by the sheer care and detail put into some of these environments. You can still beat this one relatively quickly, and it still does go for a pretty hefty price for what it is. Apparently there will be more tapes in the future, so I'd put this one on your radar if you're looking for more liminal games to play. Putting this one high on the list, I think it's going to go above 1998. Really impressed with this one. Hopefully we can get one more game on this list that's as good, if not better than it. Mm, yes. Today, I will make a joke. Backrooms new. The levels in this game are dull and the gameplay is barely existent. It requires you to find the exit of certain levels, but while in pursuit of them, you need to run away from enemies who are usually targeted right on you and faster than you as well. To the point where that when they spawn in, you practically need to run your route to the exit frame perfect or else you will be caught. Eventually, I got to the fourth level and it wanted me to collect 20 items before being able to progress, with the enemy being hot on my tail the entire time. After some attempts, I just assumed that this was not playtested in the slightest and moved on. Not a fun experience and certainly not worth your $2. Putting this one under the backroom project. Dude, I can't even explain this one. I'm just gonna let the full clip of what happened play when I tried to boot up this game. Okay, I am recording this for prosperity's sake because I literally <clears throat> cannot review this game because this is what happens when I try to even just open this game up. Yeah. Oh. 
Okay, now. If this game worked at a point, it doesn't now. It just serves to scam people out of $5 on Steam. This is worse than bad. This literally shouldn't be allowed on the store. I would put this one all the way to the bottom, but I don't even want to give it the respect of being allowed on the list. There's been some trash so far, but nothing that has served just to scam you. Avoid this at all costs and report it if you ever see it. Moving on. Literally anything would be better than what we just got, but this one actually exceeded expectations. Within the Backrooms isn't much of a game as it is an experience. The progression is very branched out, and you could walk in a lot of bizarre and dreamlike looking areas. It's like if you were to combine the Backrooms concept with something like LSD Dream Emulator. From what I've been able to see, your goal is to walk around these bizarre, early 3D environments and look for floppy disks that give you access to certain memories. After getting to level end, you can choose one of these floppy disks to put in the computer in there, and it shows you a different ending screen each time. There are several endings in this game, and you could go around looking for them for hours if you wanted to. I really enjoyed this one, although I didn't even get close to finding all the endings. But from everything I did experience, I am super impressed with what's here. The environments are kinda hit or miss, with some of them looking like fuzzy childhood memories, and the others just being the visual equivalent to pouring bleach in your eyes. Although, I think it finds a good balance between the two. Visually appealing levels are more common than the ones that are not, so it seems like those spaces serve as more of a novelty than anything else, so I can somewhat excuse it. I had a good amount of fun with this one. If you have a little bit of time to spare and want to look around for some endings, then I consider if this one is worth your hard-earned $15. If you think so, then I can certainly recommend this game for what it is, putting this one above Dream Logic but below 1998. Some pretty solid stuff here, real curious on what will be next. I beat this game in less than four minutes. All you do is walk around level zero until you get to an exit and it just abruptly rolls credits. Oh yeah, this game is also $8. Putting this one way below secret backrooms. This thing shouldn't be allowed on Steam for its price. Next. This game absolutely broke me. <laughs> Where were you? This one is just not fun, and the backrooms don't serve as an important set piece at all. Instead of being chased down by bacteria, or hounds, or party goers, you are instead hunted down by something far scarier. Woman. This game is what I can only describe as phasmophobia mixed with FNAF. You need to survive five nights in the backrooms, having to deal with threats as they show up around the map. Your goal is to make sure you keep the lights on or else the woman can attack you. And every night, a new character gets introduced that serves as a threat. The absolute worst one is definitely the dog, though. To get rid of him, you have to spray air freshener on it to make him disappear. But the problem with this one is that he will just spawn right behind a corner from you, barely giving you any time to react to your surroundings. The game heavily relies on audio cues for what's going on, so after a point I had to deafen in the call I was in to concentrate. The ending is super lackluster too, but I honestly can at least appreciate that this one attempted to do gameplay, even if it was kinda bad. I'm gonna put this one under Backroom Survival, but above Noclipped. Alright, let's continue. <laughs> So if you're a major Backroom Warfare 2 fan and I potentially give that one a low ranking or something, don't take it too personally. Oh, we finally got to this one. And it's not great. This game uses that same preset Backrooms environment for the fourth time in a row now and I am insanely tired of it. I would have skipped this game for that reason, but thankfully it doesn't use the same preset camera as well, so we're okay on that end. This is just a very dull and uninspired PvP shooter with two maps and five preset classes to choose from. The Gunplay is super stiff and it's not fun, and this game was only enjoyable because I played it with friends at 2am. There's so many better FPS alternatives out there that are even free, but if you're truly itching to engage in a gunfight in the backrooms, just play Gary's mod. I'm gonna put this one under Welcome to the Backrooms. <laughs> You walk around level 0 to 2 looking for an exit. There's no threats, and the environments you're given are super bland and uninspired. I don't really have anything else to say about this, we've seen this several times before. And we're probably gonna see it a few more times before this list is over. Putting this below Backroom Warfare 2. Moving on. <laughs> This game is absolutely unhinged. Camden. Camden, what is up with your mic? 
Backroom's Apprehension is a social deduction game in the same vein as Gmod Trouble in Terrorist Town. One player is disguised as the Skin Stealer, and you need to deduct who that is by communication and choosing who you trust wisely. The problem with this, though, is that this game seems to be very biased towards the Skin Stealer. I don't know if that was just because I could only play with a small party, but there wasn't really much of an incentive for anyone I was playing with to just not transform super early and kill who was around you. Especially with the weapons meant to defend yourself from the skin stealer being really hard to find. Maybe it's a little more balanced of a full party, but since this game is practically dead, the devs should have tried to build this game to not be so top-heavy towards the target. I had fun while playing this one, but I think that's just because social deduction games are usually fun regardless of what's going on, rather than the quality of the game itself. Once again, you could just get a better alternative to this game through Gmod. And you can even play it in the back rooms if you wanted to. I like the concept though, so for that I'll put it above the backroom survival but below transliminal. We're starting to enter the home stretch. Let's see what else is waiting for us. You run around trying to collect keys and attempt to run away from broken AI, but once it targets you, you're basically done with. Nothing that we haven't already seen, it doesn't play well, and from what I've been able to see, all of it comes down to RNG. So there was not much thought in solving the puzzles at all, and was just not a fun experience altogether. But hey, having a glow stick is at least a little more creative than a flashlight, so 10 backroom coins for that. Putting this one above Mass Extinction, but below the second self-titled game. Liminal Reality is just another game where you walk around four broken environments and don't do anything in them. The environments this time consist of that one hotel in London, an e-girl's bedroom, and level zero. But once you get to level zero, I don't think you can even progress. You're just stuck in this little condensed area. I swear, I checked every corner of this tiny map for things I could find, but I could not find a way out. The game's also just filled with a bunch of lighting and texture issues too. There's so little here, and they still weren't able to get it right, putting it below my mass extinction. Guess what you do in this game? That's right, you walk around the same levels again, sometimes being chased by entities. If I had a dollar for every time one of these games came up, I'd probably be able to pay off how much I spent on this project altogether. I just got done playing this one, and I'm already forgetting what set it apart from the other games. At the very least, it had a level select, which allowed me to get through this one a lot faster. Also, the Stanley Parable easter egg was kinda cute. For that, I'll put it above the Backrooms game, but below Reality no clip. Homestretch friends, and thankfully, we were given one pretty alright before we stop. Backroom's exploration has a pretty neat visual style, on top of actual puzzles you can solve to progress into other levels. My biggest complaint with this one, though, has to be that the dev of the game felt the need to give poorly explained notes that guide you on how exactly to get out of the level that you're in, instead of just letting the player figure it out for themselves. This type of puzzle structure just feels very cheap and takes away the fun factor of the experience for me. But for the very fact that this game at least tries to do something creative and interesting, I'll put it a bit higher on the list. It's a super pricey one as well, so I'd be aware of buying it for that reason. But like a lot of the other more expensive ones, at least it does the job of looking pretty good enough. Putting this one above the abyss has walls but below dream logic. Welp, would you look at that, our final game on the list coming out a mere nine days since writing this. Does Into the Backrooms end us off of a bang? No, it does not. You know, it's kind of poetic that our journey ends with us playing around in a level zero for less than 15 minutes, being chased by a bacteria that can't even move its legs. On top of there being practically zero sound in this game at all. After beating this one though, I felt very accomplished in myself. Is it a good game? By no means, of course not. But I personally felt very complete after playing it. I have played 40 games on this list, with the majority of them just following this exact concept. And somehow, this one still has to be one of the most bare-bones takes on it we have seen up until this point. It really encapsulates what people do with this genre of game fairly well, and it ties everything together into one neat little bow. Also say, it's going below Backrooms new. What, did you think I was going to give it a high ranking? Welp, we did it. I played every single Backrooms game on Steam from the date April 9th, 2023. What is my takeaway from all this? I never want to look at a wall with yellow wallpaper on it ever again. Jokes aside though, I do think there were some gems in there. If this video does anything, I wanted to highlight some of the less talked about Backrooms games I said were pretty good. Specifically, the Backroom Lost and Found and Lost Tape. It feels like a lot of people don't really know what to do with the Backrooms as a video game concept, and it's kind of in the middle of an identity crisis right now. Some people 
attempted to make a survival game out of it, while others just pasted down some environment, put a monster in there, and called it a day. I still don't think we have gotten the definitive Backrooms game yet. We've come close in some regards, but I truly don't believe we have yet to get something to really encapsulate the feeling of the Backrooms while still remaining fun in the process. Is it something I think can even be done? I think so, and I will patiently anticipate if or when someone finally cracks it. Keyword is patiently though, I think I can wait a little while. Anyways, the moment you've all been waiting for, here is how I would rank every single Backrooms game worst to best. Here we go. The Backrooms, first game. In the Backrooms, the Backrooms, the game. Secret Backrooms, Return the Backrooms, Into the Backrooms, Backrooms New, The Backroom Project, Backrooms Mainframe, Liminal Reality, The Backrooms Mass Extinction, Under Backrooms, The Backrooms, Second Game, Survival in the Backrooms, The Levels of the Backrooms, Backrooms Surreality, Backroom Warfare 2, Welcome to the Backrooms, The Backrooms Found Footage, The Backrooms Footage, Enter the Backrooms, the Backrooms Game, The Backrooms Experiment, Reality No Clip, The Backrooms, No Clipped, Light The Backrooms, The Backrooms Survival, Backrooms Apprehension, Transliminal, The Abyss Has Walls, Backrooms Exploration, Dream Logic, Within The Backrooms, The Backrooms 1998, The Backrooms Lost Tape, Inside The Backrooms, Escape The Backrooms, The Complex Found Footage, and the back room lost and found. Christ, I need a cold shower and an uninterrupted playthrough of RE4 Remake after this. Hope you all enjoyed my slow descent into madness though, for whatever it was worth. All right, make sure not to noclip everyone. I've been Dags, and until next time, see ya.